Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about album number 8 from Tangerine Dream, Cyclone. Okay, uh, we've now reached a particularly weird spot in the TD story. Uh, it's 1978, and uh, one of the key members from the band's most highly acclaimed classic period, Peter Bauman, has left the band, never to return. So that means it's time for a bit of a shift. Uh, the new lineup, exclusive to this album only, st uh, still features Edgar Fruza and Christopher Frank as per usual, but also brings in a new drummer in Klaus Krieger, as uh, well as multi-instrumentalist Steve uh, Jolliffe, Jolliffe, who played a load of instruments including flute, bass clarinet, keyboards, lots of other things, and had technically been in the band at one point very briefly in 1969 before Electronic Meditation had been recorded. Although he would also be gone again after this album and not come back again. And with such a change in lineup, obviously came a change in sound. And a particularly controversial one at that. For one thing, the sound of the band had shifted a decent bit over to a much more rock-oriented sound. They've still got the same winding synth passages you've heard from them before, they're hardly unrecognizable as the same band. But there is more, like, regular guitar playing and drumming with, you know, more clavinet keyboards that aren't quite as spacey as their usual trademark sound typically implies. But that change isn't nearly as controversial as a certain other especially rare addition to the Tangerine Dream sound. Uh, the fact that Steve Joliffe contributes actual singing and, uh, not exactly what I would consider traditionally good singing. Opinions on his vocal presence are extremely mixed, including from the band themselves, who mostly view the album as an embarrassing misstep. Fruza himself has gone on record to actively shit on Joliffe's singing and calling it terrible. Uh, I've even heard that Joliffe doesn't care for the record either and feels it lacks focus. Citation needed on that, I only saw that stuff in like an all music comment, but still. Granted, the album still sold decently well, just as a lot of their other projects in this era did, even charting slightly higher than Stratosphere, and it does certainly have its fair share of defenders. For as much as uh, Joliffe's vocals are like the central point of criticism for most people, I honestly never really minded him that much. Again, he is... Not what I would call a good singer. He has a very yelpy and awkwardly keening higher pitch tone to his voice that really amplifies a certain campiness to the entire approach uh, to the album. But I would at least argue his voice is a good fit for the kind of music they were trying to make, if that makes sense. It's kind of in the same way that I feel like Roger Waters is a terrible singer, but his presence doesn't throw anyone off because you already expect that kind of singing out of the kind of rock music that Pink Floyd made. Joliffe is obviously more off-putting than Waters, but primarily because Tangerine Dream Sound never actively featured vocals before, and nobody really expected to hear them. Heck, honestly, I think if an actual good singer were on this album, it'd be even more off-putting. The trouble with this album isn't the fact that it has vocals at all, it's the fact that when it does, it's a shameless Pink Floyd ripoff. Yeah, they followed up their most original album and their first to really nail down their core signature sound with Stratosphere, uh, with their least original yet. An album that goes for the same kind of prog rock approach as peak period Floyd were doing around the same time with albums like Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, and Animals. Which isn't necessarily surprising, Floyd were always an influence on TD from the beginning when their earlier albums, such as Electronic Meditation, took as many cues from stuff like A Saucer Full of Secrets as they did. But that influence is way more blatant here. Especially when you hear a track like Bent Cold Sidewalk, and all the passages with singing are seemingly ripped straight out of Welcome to the Machine, or Pig's Three Different Ones, right down to the chord progression and the choices in keyboard tones. It's really shameless about exactly what it's trying to emulate, while also lacking any of the deeper social commentary that Floyd lyrics had and replacing them with kind of just generically flighty prog rock imagery that isn't really trying to make any particular point but just sound cool or surface level poetic sounding enough to not feel out of place with the tone of the music. Now, also to be fair, when I first heard this album in high school, its existence as a shameless Pink Floyd ripoff was 
honestly part of the appeal for me. I had just started getting into Floyd like maybe a year or two prior and even if this was clearly like the inferior cheaper version, it still captured their appeal well enough that I could still pretty easily get into it. And to this day, I can't bring myself to actively hate this album as so many fans do. I don't think it's bad at all. But coming back to it now, I will have to concede that all of these faults do in fact make it one of their weakest efforts yet. A merely pretty decent effort that does actively break their previous streak of classics, even if not nearly as offensive or unlistenable a low point as it's often made out to be. For all my previously stated issues with a track like Bent Cold Sidewalk, I do still generally like that track and find it fun to listen to. In between the Floyd ripoff chorus sections, it does have a significant chunk in the middle, which focuses more on their own trademark winding synth excursions lasting for a good six minutes, that also features a lot of cool flute and woodwind accompaniment, and some of the goofy Yelp shouting vocalizations that showed up on the last track on Atom, uh, being reprised to a less annoying extent than on there. I also think the first 45 seconds of vocoders are pretty cool too. I mean, Ben Cold Sidewalk is no welcome to the machine, but, I mean, if it were a real Pink Floyd track with Roger Waters or David Gilmour singing it, and, I don't know, with Ellen Parsons engineering it so that it wouldn't sound as cheap by comparison, I really don't think people would get all that up in arms about it. Heck, if it came out in the Adam Hart Mother or Metal era before they really honed down their lyrical focus, people might have even looked back upon it as some kind of, like, crazy ahead-of-its-time masterpiece. In 1978, there was obviously a lot of much better material from both bands to compare it to, and it mostly comes off more kind of goofy than anything. But again, I can't get mad at it. And to be absolutely fair, the other tracks aren't nearly as shameless Floyd ripoffs as that track is. Rising Runner Missed by Endless Ender does feature Jolif going significantly more off-key and kind of more half-whispering and talk-singing instead of properly singing, which can maybe be a little cringeworthy, but it does have a decent amount of energy, and there are some pretty addicting clavinet riffs around the edges to give the track a decent enough hook. Do -do 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 -do. I like those parts. As far as keyboard-driven rock cuts go, it's still perfectly listenable. There's some good melodies in there. And if you wanted something in the more traditional Tangerine Dream mold, the last cut Madrigal Meridian as you covered, a nice meaty 20 minute synth epic that makes full use of its length, evolving from well-layered spacey abstraction that kinda leans away from traditional melodies in its first three minutes, into more epic territory driven by synth arpeggios and dramatic horn and keyboard chords going over sparse drumming that sort of evokes the same kind of energetic vibe as the title track from Stratosphere, albeit with more of a typically improvisational rock flair and a couple a number of cool chaotic side tracks and synth and guitar solos and finally culminating in this kind of like clavinet driven ambient passage that again maybe has a little bit of that welcome to the machine flavor to it in parts but is still pretty satisfying and it also brings back the flutes at the end which is nice for all its more rock leaning flavors this track still has all that classic tangerine dream appeal intact and can also pretty effectively act as like a precursor to the direction they end up going in and building upon with their next album yeah i do still enjoy all three tracks on cyclone i can't actively crap on this album as hard as lots of other people do and I might tend to side more with the album's defenders than its detractors. I did have a lot of fun with it back when I was in high school, too. But I also have to acknowledge this really isn't the best they can do. Even if I don't mind all the Floyd cribbing and think it, and think it makes sense given their earlier background within the prog scene, I can't say their attempt at the sound would ever be preferable to either the actual peak period Floyd records they're cribbing from, or, of course, when the band actually went out of their way to do their own thing. If I'm being totally honest, even though I find this album slightly more fun to listen than an album like, say, Alpha Centauri, I think my much greater respect for that one probably beats this out. Also, kinda like that album, the production is a little thin across the board as well. And sure, that mirrors the thinner production that Stratosphere had, but on that album it kind of added to that deserted and desolate effect it was going for, while here it just kind of furthers the wrong impression that they're trying to be a dollar store generic brand knockoff of a more famous band. Is Cyclone the worst thing ever? Hell no. I think any Tangerine Dream fan still ought to give it a shot, as long as it's not their starting point. There's some curiosity value to it at worst, it's got some interesting ideas, and there was obviously was just enough quality where their fanbase wasn't completely alienated. 
even if it probably also helped that they bounced back and would come out with other albums pretty immediately afterwards that combined their rock and electronic ambient sides way more effectively without wearing their influences on their sleeve so blatantly. The album is not bad at all. I think it's a fun listen. I wouldn't be surprised if this video doesn't even mark the last time I come back to it, but it does have all those detractors for good reason. There's lots of valid reasons to not like this album at all. I say it's decent and an interesting one-off detour, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't one of the weaker projects that I will be dedicating a video to in this series. And I'm overall feeling a 6.7 out of 10 on it. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list. Link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.